Mara Usman's brother is now in the UFC after winning the Ultimate Fighter finale against Zach Palga. His first professional fight was against Derek Wolf, where he defeated him via Kimura 1 minute and 16 seconds into the fight, but unfortunately there was not much footage from his fights in this promotion. He had two more fights after winning again against Dante Harrell by Kimura 1 minute and 8 seconds into the fight. At this point it would look like Mohamed Usman was going to be a Jiu Jitsu fighter after winning his two fights by submission but that would eventually be false as he adapted his style to be a bit like Usman where he uses his power to finish his opponents. We saw this first when he beat opponent Van Michael Palacio where he finished him via TKO. At this point Mohamed Usman was now 3-0 as a professional in TPF, Tachi Palace fights so he decided to move to the promotion victory fighting championship. He would fight current UFC fighter Dontel Mays where he'd lose by a unanimous decision, getting outstriked by Dontel. Although there is no footage on YouTube of this fight, Usman was worried about the power of Mays, which is why he didn't land as much as you would expect. A bit like Derek Lewis versus Ngannou where they both knew how much power they had so they were cautious about trading in the exchanges, which led to both fighters not landing much and staying at range to strike on the outside. This loss was good for him as he moved to Titan FC where he had very good success, where he would go on a four fight winning streak. These fighters didn't have the best of records but it was still impressive as he would dominate his opponents with his counter strike fighting style. You can see he has similar traits to Usman, they both have power and they both can wrestle. Mohamed Usman is nowhere near as good as Usman at wrestling, but he can still wrestle to an acceptable degree I would say. He is a quite balanced fighter. He started this win streak by beating Frank Tate by unanimous decision. Next he fought Alexis Garcia. Garcia was a fighter who didn't really go to three rounds. He would usually finish a fight in the first or second round. Garcia would win either by TKO, KO or submission. He only lost one fight before fighting Usman as he was on a three fight winning streak. He could have been on a six but he lost one in between. These factors made this look like an interesting bout that would end up with likely a knockout as Garcia had never made it to a decision. The fight would start with the pair swinging wildly with Usman trying to go for takedowns but would struggle to get them. 40 seconds into the fight Garcia would swing a massive hook, missing exposing his body for a takedown attempt. Usman would use effective wrestling technique to shoot for a double leg backing Garcia into the cage then into a single leg where he would quickly transition into a power double leg slamming Garcia landing into the half guard position. Usman began to land strikes to Garcia's body and head on the ground to fatigue Garcia. Two minutes left of the round, Mohamed passed his guard into full mount where he would posture up and land multiple strikes to Garcia's head. Garcia was taking a lot of shots so he moved into the back flat position where he would tap out to punches thrown to the back of the head, which hit him on the side of the head but it looked like the back of the head. Again, we saw that he could wrestle and he had a lot of power in his hands. Usman took on Reggie Cato on the main card of Titan FC 58 show. He landed a huge overhand that dropped Cato immediately. Usman jumped on for some ground and pound but the referee was quick to step in and stop the fight as soon as possible. He then fought at Titan FC 63 against Terence Hodges where he would win by unanimous decision. At this point he was 4-0 in Titan FC with a record of 7-1 where he managed to go on two winning streaks during that time. Mohamed Usman was becoming a little bit more known as he was now welterweight champion Kamara Usman's brother and had a good record. He moved to PFL where he would fight tough fighter Brandon Sales who is currently 6-2 as a pro winning 3 by TKO slash KO and 3 by submission. Brandon was also an all-rounded fighter as he had a variety of submissions including a key lock and arm triangle as well as power. This fight would end in another loss for Mohamed Usman. Brandon looked much bigger than Usman in this fight. The fight started with both fighters throwing in fainting jabs to the head and the body in the centre of the octagon. Sales would land multiple strikes to Usman's head and legs making it harder for Usman to shoot for takedowns. Usman did land a quite powerful overhand right but Sales was much bigger and had a chin so he took it with ease. The first round ended and it was quite close but I would have gave it to Brandon Sales as he had more volume landing more damage. Mohamed just seemed to swing recklessly hoping to get a KO but Sales was very big and had a chin. In the second round both fighters were trying to land in the pocket but nobody really fighting on the back foot. Sales caught Usman with a short left hook knocking him down to his knees. He began to land hooks and hammer fists to his chin but couldn't finish him. Sales caught him with a very tight standing guillotine choke but Usman found a way to escape. Sales then knocked him down again catching him with a static right hook. Brandon started landing ground and pound from full mount. Usman then gave his back to Sales, leaving him open to a rear naked choke where he would eventually pass out from it. Usman's four fight win streak came to an end, now making him 7-2 as a professional. I just believe Sales was just way better skill wise and more experienced and was way bigger than Usman. 
He then took a year break from MMA and would join Dana White's Ultimate Fighter TV series. You probably know this, but if you didn't, the winner of the first three seasons of the Ultimate Fighter competition and runners-up depending on their performance in their competition finals received a tutored six-figure contract to the UFC. These contracts are specifically three-year contracts with a guaranteed first year. Each year consists of three fights. The first year's purse consists of 12k guaranteed with a 12k win bonus, a maximum of 24k per fight. The second year purse per fight is 16k and 16k for a win bonus, a maximum of 32,000 per fight. And the third year's purse per fight is $22,000 to show up and $22,000 for a win bonus a maximum of 44,000 to fight. Although he was coming off a loss, he had a bit of hype about him as he was Kamaru Usman's brother and he had a record of seven and two. His first fight in the Ultimate Fighter was against Mitchell Sipe. There was a bit of tension between the two leading into the fight. Sipe was five and two as a pro and had been inactive. Also, so this was a good fight for Usman. The fight started with Usman on the back foot looking to counter strike against Sipe. Very similar to how Usman strikes on the feet, especially what we saw in the Colby fight. Usman was looking very desperate to land that lead left hook. Sipe caught Usman with a right overhand that looked like it dropped him, where he would land the ground and pound, but Usman would hold on to his legs and his body to make it harder to do so. This might have been a slip, because Usman was off balance, but I believe it counted as a knockdown. Sipe was being very arrogant in this fight, taunting Usman multiple times. This taunting didn't last for long as Sipe got caught with an uppercut, which knocked him down. Usman then followed up with ground and pound, but Sipe managed to get back to his feet. In the second round, Sipe's eye began to swell up due to Usman landing heavy jabs and hooks to his eye. After two rounds, there was no finish, so they had to go to a sudden death for a third round in the Ultimate Fighter. Mitchell Sipe would continue to trash talk Usman in his corner. Round 3, Usman would continue to land wild hooks to his head. The round ended with no knockout, so they went to a decision where Usman would become victorious through unanimous decision. Mohamed Usman made it to the semi-finals of the Ultimate Fighter where he fought Eduardo Perez who was 4-1 as a professional. Eduardo Perez looked much bigger than him, but despite that, he performed well. Usman would come out fast, applying pressure to Perez, landing a snap jab to him to back up against the cage. Usman was barely missing in the first round as he would land the vast majority of his strikes. Perez was not moving his head enough, which was allowing Usman to overuse his jab. Usman in the second round would back Perez against the cage, allowing him to land heavy hooks onto Perez's chin. Perez would find more success later on in the second round, as Usman became a bit static and wasn't moving enough. Three minutes into the round, Perez became the aggressor as he pushed the pace on Usman. The third round was more of a pub brawl as they would swing in the middle of the octagon, as both of them were desperate for a knockout. The swinging led to Perez being tied as Usman would continue to swing just like Kamara Usman did against Colby. The bout went to the scorecards where Usman would win again, but this time it would be by a split decision. Now that he had won that fight, he was scheduled to fight Zach Poirga at UFC on ESPN Santos vs Hill. He was undefeated as a professional and an amateur. Again, there was a bit of tension between the two during the face-offs, Zap Puaga saying he'll beat him live on television. Usman was the underdog going into this fight as a lot of people believed Zap Puaga would be too skilled for him. Due to Zap Puaga being an American football player, it's no surprise that he had the athleticism to move around in the cage, which is why he looked very fast and sharp. The fight started with Zach Puaga pushing the pace against Usman, missing a heavy right hook. Zach would jump into strikes, leaving his head exposed, but would find good success in the first round. Usman would swing heavy hooks in the first round, but Zach was able to move just in time to dodge it. At one point in the first round, Usman did catch him with a strong left hook, but Zach ate it. Things got heated at the end of the first round as Zach caught Usman with a 1-2 after the bell. I don't know if this was personal or if it was because he was in motion or if it was because he was angry. We won't know, it just happened after the bell. Round two started and Zach started to rush in again and got caught with a static left hook that knocked him out cold. I could see he was about to get knocked out as he was continuously running into Usman's guard, leaving his chin exposed as his guard was low. And look what happened. Usman landed two strikes as Puaga was knocked out cold on the floor, just like Masvidal against Ben Askren. What surprised me is the amount of power Usman had, even though he didn't turn his hips to get the KO. That alone shows he might have freakish power. Usman is now the Ultimate Fighter 30 winner. So to answer the question, how good is he? I would say he'll be in and around the rankings soon as he has the power that can knock out most of the heavyweights, just like Derek Lewis and Ngannou. So he could be losing a fight, like we saw with Derek Lewis against Curtis Blades, and still somehow find a way to win. But style-wise, I'd say he's more like Ngannou, 
because he can wrestle also effectively and he also has freak like power. But we need to see him fight some top level fighters because so far when he fought an experienced top level fighter such as a Dontel Mays or a Sailors, he has crumbled and he's been finished or he's gone to a decision and lost and not performed. So he could be known as a bottler but we will not know until he's had at least two or three more fights. This win was impressive though, Zach Puaga has never been knocked out ever in his career or even lost a fight. He might have lost in the early early amateur days but at the older amateur days or professional he's never lost. I think Mohamed Usman should fight someone like Chris Dalkaus as they are both fighters with a lot of power and Chris is coming off two losses and hopefully if Tom Aspinall comes back next year we could see a fight between them two next year. Do you think Mohamed can become a champion at heavyweight? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.